change. So uh, a couple weeks ago, oh no, it's about, no, we're about a month now, came out of the series on David, we're going to the book of Acts, and it's still interesting, even though we're doing the series on uh, uh, Acts, how the last two series kind of find its way creeping into this, uh, the book, because it's the same Bible, by the way. Um, and so, with tonight, we have two uh, services left, technically, for uh, 2018, what we call our second new year. Um, and uh, I believe God has uh, strategically placed these uh, last two sermons for what's going to be kicking off in, in uh, January with this Acts um, series that we're doing. However, for the quick recap, because we're way past the first few verses, but basically we've been verse by verse, kind of like the Bible study deal. The account of everything Jesus began to do and teach. And what we're trying to do, what the culture, the society, not just here at 1C22, but here as a believer personally, just to challenge yourself. Are we doing what Jesus is doing and are we teaching what he's teaching? And so we all fall short, right? We all fall short of that. But at the end of the day, it becomes the goal or the standard. And so the book of Acts starts off with, with talking about what the purpose is of every believer. Everything that Jesus began to do and teach. And verse 2, until he was taken up, after he gave commandments to the apostles, he chose through the Holy Spirit. And so even though we've gone through basically the first uh, whole entire chapter 1, because now we're in the second chapter. Congratulations, we did. We made it. We got to the second chapter. Took us about a month, but we got there. And it says, note 1a, when the day of Pentecost or Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, had fully come, they were all in one accord. That's one word, by the way, that, 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 that word. So even though it's, you see it's one accord, but there's in unison, in unity. They were all in one accord. Now Ephesians 3, or Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 says, strive to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. If you're going old school to King James, it'll say endeavor. Because fighting for you, that, that's what you literally have to do. You have to fight for unity. And so the challenge was, when it comes to the kingdom of God, we need to fight to unite like the world does. Mm -hmm. The world should not fight harder for unity than the kingdom of God. Here in... Uh, Psalms 133, a, a verse that I'd like to exegete. I haven't really delved into the verse because people use this a lot of times when they're talking about unity. But, but there's a few things that, that uh, I hope that the Spirit of the Lord will put uh, in your spirit tonight. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell, to, for, uh, brothers to dwell together. So when it says, gam yachad, or also together. Pleasant for brothers, brothers to dwell together. This is still carrying the concept of Acts chapter 2, and you're going to see exactly how that fits in, 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 a, in a minute. There is a lot of believers are experiencing what I call separation anxiety. Yahweh, without community, unity dies. Yahweh did not create us to live disconnected from each other. So why does he say it's good for brothers to dwell together? Now in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, where it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. Verse 2. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind filling the house. A rushing mighty wind filling the house. What does Jesus say about the wind in John 3? Verse 8. The wind blows where it wants. You can't tell where it comes or goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The wind, the Spirit, by the way, because the, the Hebrew word ruach, the word for wind is the exact same word for Spirit. So when we say the Holy Spirit, ruach, hakodesh, or the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Wind, it's actually the same word. What happened in Acts chapter 2? Suddenly, suddenly, there's a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Unity gives birth to sudden effects of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, Walter. So, of course, the enemy is going to fight unity. Not the world. I mean, they need to get a green peace. 
gay pride, whatever. When it comes to the world, boy, they, whoo, they literally are schooling us a fight for unity. Muslim and homosexuals walking down the exact same street. Hold hands, saying, we're one. What? The, the Muslims that are, that are throwing people off roofs in Iraq and, and homosexuals off roofs, but here, So how are we relate in Psalms 133? Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. Acts chapter 2, what had happened? There, they were together, then all of a sudden a, a rushing mighty wind representing the Holy Spirit. The rest of the verse in Psalms 133, it is like the unity is like the precious oil upon the head that ran down Aaron's beard down to the edge of the garments. Now get this, don't run past this. When God anoints you, he's not just taking a part. Like, it, 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 it starts at the head, but it keeps going all the way down. Who's the head of the body? And what's the goal of that head? That anointing to run all the way down. Jesus says in John 17, I pray that they all may be one, just like you are in me, just like you are in me and the Father, and I in you. Sorry, it's a little double, but you know, you know what I'm saying. The unity aspect, the way the Father and the Son are one, that's what God, Jesus, the Father wants for his people because it starts from the head and it goes all the way down to the body the oil ran down Aaron's body from the top of his head to the bottom of his robe the same way Yeshua activates the anointing when there's unity in all of his body amen So it says when the day of Pentecost, Shavuot was fully come, they were all in one place. I'm never the dogmatic guy that says you can, you can worship God anywhere. Well, we understand you don't have to just worship God in Jerusalem, right? I'm just in the mountain. But there's something about the coming together of the saints in one place. So we as believers are to know our place. Unfortunately, it's been as a derogatory term. We're talking to our kids, know your place, and we're talking to other people. And it, it, but no, it's, when you know your place in the kingdom, it's a good thing. God wants you to know your place. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there. Amen? So what did he say? Behold how pleasant and good it is for brothers to dwell together. It's like the oil of the anointing. But then he says, as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion, there. See what happened? You see what's happening? There. Yahweh commanded the blessing. With the unity of the said, There. Now this is interesting, when I was talking earlier about um, how some of our past uh, stories may come up. Uh, upon the mountains of Zion, uh, this, is, this is interesting. You have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the church of the firstborn and to Jesus. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's there, right? The believers, the assembly, the congregation, the ecclesia, the kahal, the adat. When you bring all these things together, that's where God's presence is commanding his blessing. But there's something else I want you to see that's connected to Zion. Because if we spiritualize this whole thing and don't understand that Zion is a real place, the com coming together of people were real people, real situations, a real place. Last series, when we talked about David, there was something significant about David took the stronghold of Zion. So before Donald Trump made any type of declaration, this was already going on. People were being upset. People were being in a position where it wasn't about politics, it was about prophecy. David fought, fought for Zion. David, we talked about, represents Jesus. He establishes the messianic throne. Jesus is ascended. And there is still a battle for Zion. And each, each, each week that this thing kind of bubbles over, like, you know, came out two weeks ago, and I'm like, are people really still tripping over that? Of course they are. That's exactly what he said. All the nations will be gathered together. Literally, the United Nations gathered together and condemned us, the United States. That literally just happened. So David took the stronghold of Zion. When the Philistines heard that they anointed David king over Israel, they all came up to seek David, to pursue him. Not like, hey, David, we like it. They all notice, look at the prophetic scenario. When they found out that David was anointed king, who did David represent? Jesus. 
Why did the Gentiles rage and imagine vain things? They're gathered together against Yahweh and his Messiah. Psalms 2. So, I, I, I mean, I don't know if the United Nations just read Psalms 2 like, yeah, let's do that. I don't know if that's, if that's what they're trying to do. But I'm telling you, like, this stuff is getting very awfully close to a shofar blowing and some Jewish dude coming back on a horse. They all came up to seek David. And David asked Yahweh, shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? God commanded the blessing at Zion. Now remember, the same person that wrote Psalms 133, David, said God commanded the blessing of Zion. But there would be no blessing if David had not fought for it to take the stronghold of Zion. The fighting for unity, the fighting for Zion is the same thing. David's blessing of deliverance and eternal life is for all believers in Yeshua, who is the stronghold of Zion. We'll get um, a little bit deeper into that in this, this uh, Second Samuel five passage. It's about to it's about it's about to help me out tonight. Jesus says again. We quoted this verse, but we emphasized something different last time. We talked about the wind blows. It's like the spirit. You hear the... The sound of it. The sound of it. What happens in Acts 2? There came a sound from heaven. Like a rushing wind. A sound. This is why Jesus is always challenging people. Even though regardless of what you're saying, keep your spirit open. He that has ears to hear like the music. Listen for the sound. Regardless of what the world is doing to distract you, regardless of what's going on in your family, regardless of what's going on, listen for the sound. Because the wind is still blowing. So here in this second Samuel chapter 5, where David is taking the stronghold of Zion, watch this. He asked him, Yahweh, he said, uh, uh, do you want me to go up? Will you deliver the Philistines on my hand? And the word of the Lord speaks. And it says, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, you shall stir yourself up. Then Yahweh will go before you and strike down the army of the Philistines. There came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Just like the wind blows and you hear the sound of it. And all of a sudden, when David was about was going through these battles with the Philistines, God says, I need you to listen for the sound. But he gave him a prerequisite to hear the sound. You need to stir yourself up. Just when you feel that you need to stir yourself up. Second Timothy 1 6. Stir up the gift which is in you by the laying on it. Stir yourself up. See, we, we unfortunately people have taken the battle is the Lord thing to this far extreme, which means I just lay down, I wait for Jesus to do everything, I don't have to show up, I don't have to prepare, I don't have to be ready. No, that's not how it works. You gotta stir yourself up. You gotta put yourself in position. Yeah, he'll God will fight, but he ain't telling you to not fight. I mean, you gotta be there. The battle is the Lord's. So we're just gonna stay home in our cots. No, that's not what happened. They all sort of dressed ready for battle. The name of tonight's sermon is The Wind Within. question was, do you need to go up? And he says, you know, at this time, listen, just wait on when you hear the sound. Sometimes we say, I just want more of the Holy Spirit. Well, what if we have all the Holy Spirit we need? Because he's in us. That's why God challenges us to stir ourselves up. When the Holy Spirit is already in you, you don't need to go up again to get what Yahweh has already sent down. Start up. We're down here. 
God has filled us with His Spirit, His glory, stirred up. So again, in the 2 Samuel 5 passage, verse 17, David takes a stronghold of Zion. He's doing his battles because that's the other thing. We think that once we have possessed what God had promised us, that that's when the battle's over. The most, one of the most important points of the stronghold argument, or specifically when it came to the battle of David, was David was already anointed king. David already had the promise and the anointing, but those were when the hardest challenges came. It wasn't because he was trying to be something, to be something that he, he already was that king. Sometimes the greatest challenge that you face is not because you're waiting to get someplace, you're waiting to be in the promise, because you're already there. So David has already taken the stronghold, but guess what? There's still battles. And David asked Yahweh, will you deliver them, speaking of the Philistines, to my hand? And God says, Natan attain. Surely I will. When, when, when the Hebrew is trying to emphasize something, well, like we say, apparently I said to you, surely well, all God does, he just repeats it twice. I will give, I will give. Give, 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 yes. I will surely deliver them into your hands. Thank God for the gift of deliverance. But the passage in 2 in Samuel 5 was, that was the second time when he says, shall I go again? But make sure we back up a couple verses to the first time. When David came to Baal Piratzin. And he whooped them. He took out the Philistines. And said, Yahweh has broken through upon my enemies. God has broken through. The reason why. The second time when he's like, okay, so do I need to go up again? When the Philistines came to attack, he's like, no, you don't need to go up anymore. I've already broken through. The Holy Spirit is now in you. It's time to stir yourself up. But that the all parrot scene. And I've heard it preached from other people sometimes that, that he's, the, he's, he's the, the Lord of the breakthrough. But master, now remember, we got to be careful when we use the word Lord because because. Yahweh and Lord are not the same. So this is a Yahweh of the breakthrough. This is Lord, this is which means the owner or the master. That's why there's sometimes you see Lord, L-O-R-D in lowercase. Sometimes you'll see it in uppercase. But then you'll sometimes you'll see Baal. This challenge, but, but in Israel right now, a Baal means a husband or an owner, a master. Because what God is telling you that he is the owner of every breakthrough. He is the master of every breakthrough. Whatever the breakthrough is you're seeking, he is the owner of that breakthrough. And he's broken through upon your enemies. But look at the strategy. Are we supposed to go up again? No, God says do something else. The Philistines came up again. And when David inquired of Yahweh, he said, circle behind them. Circle behind them and come at them and throw them the balsam trees. It's a surprise attack. Remember last week when we were talking about if, if the rulers of this world had, had, had any idea they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. They had no idea what to do. There, there's a surprise that God has for people when they think that, 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 that they've got God's people in a corner. In Yeshua's spirit, we have an invisible army delivering us breakthroughs that even invisible enemies cannot see coming. Go behind. We're, we're, we're going to do it a little differently. When the, the Holy Spirit, the way he moves, the way he works, and regardless of whatever plan the enemy is using to try to tear you down or destroy you, but when you get a revelation of the Holy Spirit and how he fights for you. Even the enemy, it, it, he circumvents every plan. He breaks through every single obstacle that you think, that you think 
God is not able to break through. So it was one thing. When Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good, healing all who were pressed into death. But Acts chapter 2 was such a pivotal game changer. Because now it meant everyone who accesses the Messiah has the opportunity to receive his gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the most powerful spirit in all existence. The person of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it was a sound like a rushing, mighty wind that came upon them when they all were one accord. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask for your spirit tonight to minister to every single one of us right now, Father, concerning their personal breakthrough, Lord God. Some of you, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, yeah, you don't need to go up anymore, but you do need to go around. You need to go a different way. Some of you, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, listen, listen for my sound. There's a specific direction. And some of you, the Spirit of the Lord is just telling you that he owns your mirror. So I pray, Father, anyone with any personal struggle, Lord God, any personal balance, a battle, any personal challenge, I pray, Father, that they would experience the breakthrough of your spirit, just like it, the al seen. That you would break through on their enemies, that which is trying to destroy them and attack them, that which is trying to hinder them or retake back Zion or, or take back things that, 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 that the territory that God has been rightfully given us. But then, God, we pray, Father, for the corporate anointing, Father. We pray, Father, for the enemies, Father, of our faith, the enemies of the kingdom of God. And we ask, Father, we pray that you bless them, Father. We pray, Father, that you, that you we, we, pray, we bless those who curse us. We pray for those who spite for you. But, Father, we pray, Lord God, that you do not allow, Father, their plans to succeed in taking out your people within this pivotal hour. We ask, Father, that we fight harder for you. We ask, Father, that we fight harder for not just our personal breakthrough but also each other's breakthroughs. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The, the very first few, uh, uh, this first first month that we've been talking about uh, this series on the book of Acts has been uh, very interesting that, you know, we haven't really got to the quote-unquote Holy Spirit stuff, even though that's, that's pretty much what you see a whole lot of stuff happening. So it was very fascinating to me that the first thing that God wanted us to understand about, before we talk about, oh, the miracles, the signs, where, oh God, why, why can't we see more of that? Whatever you like, do they, are, are they listening to my spirit? They heard the sound when they were together. If you're not together, you can't hear the sound. The unity that God wants with his people is one thing, but also he wants us to hear that sound. The wind blows wherever will the flight of the spirit. And I'm saying, when I, when I see the deficit of people that don't listen to everything else but the Spirit of God within the kingdom, listen to every other reason, man made reasoning, flesh and carnal wisdom, but when it comes to what is the Spirit saying, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That has always been the prayer of this house. That has always been the prayer of the person. I don't care who, who, who feels like um, uh, I, everyone doesn't know or believe in my motives. Everyone doesn't know or care about uh, maybe what the time that I put in and pray fast, but the only thing that I can consistently ask God is to hear Him. That's it. Even if I don't do what He says, right? Even if, but he, but when I don't do what He said, I get rebuked because I know He did tell me. But right now, there is a danger of people not listening to the voice of God. So the power, the anointing, the breakthroughs, the miracles, 
the, the healing, the signs and wonders begin with healing the sin. Amen.